Thank you. Please be seated. Good afternoon. Distinguished uh, senators, members of the Duma, and citizens of Russia. Every State of the Nation address is first and foremost a look to the future, and particularly about our near-term plans. And those issues which we consider to be absolutely fundamental for the long-term development of the country. This action plan, concrete measures, have been elaborated during visits to various parts of the country, uh, consultations with uh, engineers, teachers, entrepreneurs, businessmen, and the heroes of our regions including volunteers in all parts of Russia. The real needs of people, of course, talking about these near-term plans, come out in all these consultations. The striking, the strivings of the Russian pe people, particularly with regard to the projects they are engaged on, upon. And, of course, our attention will be constantly focused on those tasks before us. We have already shown that we are capable of solving the most complex tasks and challenges, including the threat of terrorism, the threats to our security, and... This year, we are seeing the 10 years of the Russian Spring. And particularly the fight of the people of Donbass to defend their homeland. And of course, that gives us a reason for pride. All that inspires us and encourages us in the thought that we will overcome everything. Together, we are able to solve all the problems. One only has to think about the global epidemic recently, which we uh, overcame, but also the whole system of support, moral support of the population. as well as defending, of course, our compatriots in the Donbass and in eastern Ukraine. And our citizens, it is our citizens and our teamwork together, our cohesion, which has achieved all this. Right in the beginning of the special military uh, operation, uh, we saw the support of the overwhelming majority of the Russian population and we see that their choice to support us is unswerving, despite all the losses. And this is in the interests of not only the entire country, but uh, the benefit of humanity as a whole. And we have shown flexibility and sustainability in developing our industry to these ends. And we have seen that our compatriots are involved in a constant struggle, a constant effort, endeavor to overcome these uh, threats. Billions of rubles have been spent uh, to support uh, vol uh, voluntary organizations, public organizations throughout Russia. And... This kind of assistance which we have achieved is absolutely invaluable. We have seen general support. Our heroes on the front lines and in the trenches are suffering the most, but they understand that the whole country is with them. I'd just like to 
point up here, the defense of the Motherland Fund and all the voluntary organizations, all the bodies, the government bodies, uh, which are supporting our heroes, their families, their wives and children who are waiting for them to come home. I'd just like to also commend the work of uh, parliamentary parties who have supported us, uh, which has been essentially one of the bullocks of support uh, for the country as a whole. Nobody is allowed to interfere in our domestic affairs. The so-called West, with its uh, colonialist uh, tendencies, is striving not only to contain our development, but they are intent on destroying us and using our space for whatever their purposes are, including Ukraine. They are absolutely determined, determined to uh, introduce division amongst us and weaken us. And we have to ensure the determination of our people in the face of these threats. And this encompasses all the various representatives of the different regions and the multicultural nation, which is Russia. And it involves all our common efforts together, together, shoulder to shoulder, we are fighting for a common cause, that of the motherland. Citizens of Russia will defend our freedom and independence. It is only down to you that our way will be determined for the future. And the only people who are able to actually rise to the occasion and meet the challenges which face us. Dear friends, the defense and strengthening of our security is being effected on all fronts, particularly on the front, the military front. And thanks to that is thanks to all those who are fighting for the motherland at the moment, who are risking their lives every day. And we commend your valor. Russia will always forget, will always remember its fallen heroes. And I should just like to hear, to, to um, have a moment of silence now for them. Thank you. Our armed forces have a huge military experience, particularly in tactics, in the art of war, and it has involved a whole playard, a panoply of uh, very talented military leaders, and particularly those who are experienced in operating very um, high-tech uh, armaments. This is absolutely essential for our military success. We understand what is to be done, and the work in that direction is being continued without pause, without respite. The combat capabilities of the armed forces have uh, shown their uh, mettle in many occasions, and they have acted absolutely mm, self-assuredly throughout our territory. As I have said uh, on many occasions, we are doing absolutely everything to solve all the tasks involved in the special military operation. 
to protect our sovereignty and the security of our citizens and to show total responsibility in terms of guaranteeing the use of uh, nuclear arms. Everything has been done in that respect since uh, 2017. The Kinjal uh, weapon system has not only shown uh, its uh, strength and its capabilities, uh, but it has actually uh, shown that on the ground. We have also uh, used the uh, sea-based Sirukon system and very successfully, and it's already in commission. And the avant-garde intercontinental ballistic missile system as well. And the Borivyesnik, the Stormy Petrol uh, system, is also a case in point. And I think we can say without any exaggeration, they have shown their unique uh, capabilities. And they are being shown to be effective in the areas of combat already. A whole range of other very state-of-the-art uh, weapon systems are being uh, elaborated and used. And all this in the interest of strategic stability. And I just want to say now that I think that you have also all understood, particularly those government bodies, that we are threatened by enemy forces who are determined, as they say themselves, to uh, to effect a strategic defeat of Russia in the field. A very good example of that recently was the accusation of Russia that we were um, preparing to uh, launch a nuclear attack in space. This is just a lie to make us look bad. And you have to remember here that uh, for the last 15 years, uh, we have been proposing, we put forward a proposal to uh, to contain the use of uh, nuclear weapons, and nothing was done about it. So we have all grounds possible to maintain that the whole question of our uh, striving for strategic hegemony is nothing but pretense. And the only reason for America uh, negotiating with Russia uh, is in order to, uh, to achieve things in their own interests. And of course, our position in that respect is absolutely understandable. We are interested in world stability, and, but we understand that that can only be achieved by unity and defending our national interests, the interests of the Russian Federation. We also understand that the West is trying to involve us in a, an arms race, the kind of thing that um, we saw in the 80s in the Soviet Union. The uh, defense spending of the Russian Federation, Federation is 13% of GDP at the moment. What we are determined to do is to develop uh, the industrial scientific base of the country and to rationally use our resources and to make sure that our armed forces are properly provided for. We have to accelerate the rate of development of 
uh, military structures and make sure that uh, the army and the navy are properly equipped. We have to look at the principles of their organization, for example, particularly with regard to air defense and other areas of uh, defense forces, particularly with regard to high-precision uh, weaponry. And we have to make sure that the uh, our western flank is properly uh, protected here, uh, particularly with regard to the expansion of NATO, uh, Sweden, and Finland. They, NATO and America are active in other parts of the world, uh, of course, and uh, they continue to lie there, to deceive And they are preparing to strike our territory and using the best possible forces, the most effective forces to do so. But we remember the fate of those who uh, tried to invade our territory. And, of course, their fate will be much more tragic than anything that we could face. They have to understand that we also have weapons. Weapons that can defeat them on their own territory. And... Of course, all this is uh, very dangerous because it could actually trigger the use of nuclear weapons. Do they not understand that? These people are people who have not been through arduous experiences. They've forgotten about it, but we did. Through the Caucasian War, for example, and now in the uh, conflict in Ukraine. They think they are supreme. But Russophobia, like other racist ideologies, blinds people and uh, deprives them of their, their rational faculties. It is quite clear that we have to work on bringing about new contours of security for Russia. And I think that all our efforts should be put in having negotiations with all the countries of the world in that respect. That is absolutely essential for all of us. Without Russia, there is no solid peace in the world. We are striving for world solidarity in trade, finance, techno technological breakthroughs, and we are fighting the old stereotypes throughout the world. BRICS is a very good example of that. I won't go into detail, but uh, it accounts for something like 30% of the uh, world GDP. One should not forget these. These are very convincing figures. And 10 years ago, these results were completely different. Global trends are objective. Nobody can escape them. BRICS has been expanding over the last 10 years. In 2021, uh, uh, it was only 16%. It has grown enormously, 31% now.
and in uh, 2021 the situation changed even further. These are incontrovertible figures. This is objective reality. And this is what's going to happen in the future as well. Obviously, with our allies, with our friendly countries, we will be uh, working towards a new global financial structure. And the West is actually discrediting its own banking system, which has been predominant for, for decades. We are for parity and mutual respect and new new states more and more countries are plugging into this line of russia the eurasian economic community is a case in point and russia is developing very actively its dialogue with asean countries with the African continent as well. We are sincerely, we are sincere supporters of their sovereignty. We are also developing very good relations with Arab countries, which is an area which is undergoing tremendous dynamic development. We have a whole range of uh, economic links with all these countries and we are determined that there should be an international program to support their national cultures and languages and so on. Incidentally, um, I'm absolutely sure, friends and citizens, that you will know that many visitors are coming to Russia to uh, our great fairs and seeing how strong and robust Russia is and uh, how that is growing from generation to generation. Uh, tradition, history, uh, moral stances are set out for all to see. What we are intent on is developing our culture. This is absolutely the opposite of what's happening in the West, which is where family ties and uh, moral values are being destroyed. Our choice is to support civilized values, the civilized values of many millions throughout the world. Russia is at the moment uh, faced with a declining birth rate, uh, but this shows this is a global trend and it has to do with all kinds of uh, matters, mainly economic. And many, many factors influence this uh, decline in the birth rate. But Russia is fighting against that at every level of government and uh, the authorities. And first of all, it is our religion and our moral values which are uh, to the fore here. Big families must become the norm In the next six years, I echo your applause there. So in the next six years, we have to achieve a sustainable birth rate and to make sure that our education uh, system is uh, in line with economic development. And in every single 
address I will make to you, I will return to this theme. I've only just begun. Let me begin with the most important things. The most important problems are the low household incomes. In 2023, there were 42 million uh, Russians who were below the poverty line, and the this has actually lowered now to something like 13 million people. This is always at the center of our attention, this whole problem. We have increased the allowance for uh, people in this uh, category, and particularly pregnant women, from the beginning of 2023. And we have also launched the so-called social contract, which particularly favors big families. And the provision of particular services with the minimal amount of bureaucracy involved. And uh, something like uh, 100, million, 100 billion rubles have been earmarked for this. All the details have already been elaborated. And all these measures have actually targeted something like 9% of the population as a whole. So now the poverty level is something like 30%. And we are aiming for that to be something like 7% by 2030. And before that, 12%, say. So we have to particularly uh, concentrate on big families. This is a very difficult challenge. It's systemic. And it is absolutely essential that all the measures we are taking in this uh, field, all the instruments, uh, are effective and give palpable, tangible results. And so we are launching a new national project based on concrete measures to help uh, maternity and big families. First of all, Russian regions are going to carry out their own uh, or bring in their own measures in favor of big families. And the central government is going to help particularly those uh, entities of the federation who are where uh, the uh, birth rate is particularly low in the north for example and the east and where the birth rate is lower than the average and to the end of this year we will be allocated billions of rubles to these underprivileged areas. And this uh, pact, the social pact, will begin uh, as from next year and is aimed at uh, creating a huge amount more of housing. Uh, this is more than the 71 million uh, square meters which were uh, brought in uh, at the end of the 80s. We also are going to incentivate um, uh, mortgages we are helping families with only one child and those with more. And we are going to maintain the basic parameters of before as well. 
and we will be giving support to families with children uh, up to six years old. And the state is actually going to use some of its reserves to support other uh, measures uh, in this line. This year, we will be spending 50 billion on it, and in coming years, even more. And we are also intent on making sure that the housing area actually is refreshed each year. And these families, we have to remember, are our pride and glory. In 2018, there was a 26% rise in big families in Russia. And I signed a decree f for big families throughout the Federation. If you have a big family, then you have more and more problems to solve, so you need more resources. And the tax deductions have been uh, reduced by a factor of two, halved, in fact, in order to help them. What does this mean? Uh, for example, a family with three children will maintain its budget and receive 300, 300 rubles, and then it will be increased uh, correspondingly with each child. A family with one child uh, w is now uh, going to receive an allowance of uh, 60,000 and uh, further children will uh, involve allowances of even more. And the minimum income is going to be increased uh, by 2030. So I'd just like to uh, express my gratitude here to the organizations which are uh, helping particularly uh, ill people, the sick, uh, invalids and six children, for example, especially those people who require continual care. And uh, I am urging an increase in expenditure in this area. We need to get to a single state level here, particularly with regard to those people who are really in need. And this covers something like half a million of our citizens. And we are hoping that full-time care, long-term care, will, by 2030, uh, cover 100% of those people who really need it. By 2030... By 2030, we hope to be able to cover uh, 70, if not 80 percent of all the needs in this respect, particularly with regard to the backward regions or isolated regions of the territory. It is very important. That Life expectancy should be lengthened, but in a healthy, robust way, and that we can look forward to the uh, long life expectancy of our children and grandchildren. 
So I propose that we should launch a new program for protecting mothers and maternity in general so that the next generation is strong and robust, healthy. This involves modernization of whole sectors dealing with uh, maternal care, uh, repairs to health centers, re-equipping, this kind of thing. And I think over the last uh, couple of years, we've seen a huge uh, increase in people who are going in for sport in Russia. And uh, from the beginning of next years, we will be introducing tax breaks for all those who are, uh, are involved in sporting activities. This is a joke, of course. Give up drinking and go skiing. But, you know, this is a, a, a slogan which we, we knew about, but it's having good results. And we have seen a big decrease in the use of alcohol. And I think this uh, has an effect on the uh, health of the nation as a whole. And I would also propose that uh, federal resources uh, should uh, allocate more resources to uh, sporting facilities in uh, remote towns, setting up pitches, for example, for games, and you know this is uh, targeted not only at children but also at the parents as well. And tens of billions of rubles are going to be allocated from the federal budget for this purpose. And colleges of further education, secondary schools, primary schools should all be doing sport. And there are a lot of these facilities, sporting facilities, that uh, require renovation. And I propose that they should all be properly, fully modernized. Something like more than 8,000 8, um, schools require uh, repairs as well, and we are going to uh, make sure there is a plan for that in hand. And I think that shows we're on the right path. Uh, Paul we shall be allocating more than 400 billion rubles for the repair of schools. Apart from that, in the next six years, uh, we are proposing to open uh, clinics in all schools because I think there is a need for that. In 2022 and 2023, Uh, only 65% of uh, schools had such a kind of clinical facility, and we have obviously a lot of work to do there. Shifts in school are also changing. We are increasing the second shift in schools. And one of the most urgent problems before the country is uh, to uh, make sure that we accelerate the development of the educational sector as a whole. And uh, we should have second shifts in more than 100, 150 schools. The older generation now
we have to think about the older generation and the new generation of the future. They are the guarantors of our future history. So we have to consolidate our development plans for young people. The Youth of Russia is a new program which we are now launching as well. This must be a project aimed at the future, targeted at the future and for the future of this country. We do not forget our uh, very grave responsibility that we bear for the future of the country. We want our youth to be a single united team. And I am also launching a scheme to give 5,000 rubles to all uh, the directors of schools in order to increase this effort. And rewards and incentives will be given to uh, those who uh, perform uh, particularly well in the educational arena. And particularly we have to pay attention to those uh, areas which are uh, underpopulated. And for those people, I would propose that we double the incentive. I'd just like to add also the following. And that has to do with the increase of uh, salaries for teachers. Uh, this is part of the May decrees, and uh, they are going to be strictly adhered to. And we need to absolutely increase the income of everybody involved in teaching. Their pay is really low in comparison with other sectors of the economy, and yet they deserve much more. I understand that this is a problem which has been on the decks for a long time, which is very complex. It's uh, connected with the number of teachers in different regions and so on and so forth. All these the questions have to be addressed. Uh, I don't want to go into detail too much about that at the moment. But I would just urge the government in or by 2025 to uh, elaborate a new model of uh, incentives for everybody in education and throughout the country. And another whole issue is motivating uh, teachers, particularly in secondary and higher education. More than 10 billion rubles uh, is going to be allocated to that. Education has always been in the forefront of innovation. new methodologies and so on. So these these new educational cadres are absolutely important in terms of leading the country forward. And we've launched an experiment in some of the uh, northwest regions of Russia here, uh, including Donbass uh, and where we are opening more and more schools. The curriculum for our uh, children has to be rational but also balanced. And we have to make sure that 
some things are excluded from the curriculum, which are unnecessary. I'd just like to colleagues in the government urge them to look at this whole problem of the curriculum. In this connection, the there is a lot of debate, public debate, on the uh, single curriculum for the entire country. And I think that the uh, moves we are taking are really encouraging this whole process. And we have to make sure that there is more choice in the system. So these are sort of banal things, but they have to be paid attention to. The economy of Russia in general has actually moved on much more dynamically than most of the rest of the world, uh, particularly in regard to the other countries of the so-called G7. I want to draw your attention particularly here to the enormous role of solidarity which we've seen over the last couple of years. Our economy is becoming more and more complex but also more sustainable. It has grown by 19 percent, no less. And we are fifth in the world, ranking in terms of the quality of growth. And I think we can affirm here that in the next decade, we will be making one more uh, step forward and become number four in world, in global rankings. And this must be translated into an increase in household earnings. So the standard of living w must go up. And we are indexing minimum wages and simple machine tool operator will his wages will go up from twelve thousand to nineteen thousand and we're proposing it goes even higher which will obviously uh, impact on the federal budget as a whole we understand the risk factors that could actually slow up the uh, growth of the economy as a whole in this respect But we have to invest in staff, in personnel, but also in technical advances. This is strategically important for the country. There is a huge young generation emerging in Russia. And this is a very good thing. We have a huge amount of the population under 20. That is 17 million, which is actually uh, much larger than what we were expecting. So it's very important that these children, these teenagers, become professionals prepared for the new 21st century. And we have to make sure, therefore, that our cadres are refreshed. I've spoken about this a lot, uh, but we have to make sure that uh, uh, 
our entire educational system works in a cohesive way where all the elements are uh, connected, connected up. And profile orientation is something we must concentrate on there. I would like now to turn to the uh, business community, to medical uh, professionals and so on. That there must be included in the education system more outreach to museums, hospitals, uh, medical facilities, and so on and so forth. This is something which I've learned by traveling around the country. We have to have uh, training in uh, avionics, in uh, uh, more technology. And we hope in the next uh, five years there will be an increase of a million uh, specialists and graduates in these areas, which are so central for the country. Uh, in medicine, in services, in tourism, and so on. All this is terribly important for the development of the country. And we have to also make sure that there is good uh, secondary education available. We have to not only repair schools and uh, sports facilities, uh, but also make sure that the living conditions are uh, sufficient. And uh, for this purpose, I'm earmarking 100 billion rubles from the federal budget. We have also uh, earmarked 4 billion rubles for the repair of um, colleges of further education and universities. On tertiary education in general, we have to make sure that there is a robust development throughout the country, and uh, we are now launching 25 new uh, universities throughout the country. We have to expand and develop that program further and allocate for that purpose four hundred billion rubles from the federal budget. And obviously having we have to make sure that all these campuses have the uh, right kind of facilities for students to work and study. We have to make sure that welfare uh, is involved. And I urge the government to pay great attention to this whole area. Last year, we uh, made sure that there would be big changes in the senior tertiary, tertiary element And I should like to urge you to um, put this whole idea of incentivizing uh, the top range of uh, uh, universities uh, and put that into effect this year. We have to ensure the good quality of all the most important universities in the country. And I propose that we should continue the funding of such organizations um, to the tune of 100 billion uh, rubles to the end of the next six years. We have to make sure that education is tied in with the development of startups particularly technological startups.
and we have to make sure that all the graduates from such uh, schemes are properly paid as well. This is the foundation of our stability, science. I'm dying. We have always thought about the future, and we have to act in exactly the same way. No other country in the world, apart from Russia, has uh, a program called Mega Science, uh, and it is one which we are uh, involving other scientists throughout the world in. And we hope very much that this will be create a competitive base for biology, life sciences, and cosmic pro uh, space programs as well. And we are going to double the uh, effort of government uh, in this area. And we will become soon one of the most leading countries of the world in terms of science and technology. And of course, private business has to invest in this area too. The, the important thing is the effectiveness of this education system, and it has to yield results. And this has to do particularly with such areas as genetics and agricultural science. New technological programs are being launched. First, though, they have to be independent. We have to look at programs aimed at increasing and enhancing the health of our citizens. The Everything must be targeted towards the sustainability of the economy. Drones, uh, ec data, ec uh, statistics, all these are areas of the future, and we have to make sure that uh, we are involved in them. We have to think about the markets of the future, particularly with regard to high-tech uh, manufacture. We also have to make sure that uh, we have inter-technological platforms and make sure also that uh, there is a good base for producing spare parts. So all our instruments, all our government bodies are concentrated on that kind of effort. This is a real priority for government. The renewal of our industrial base is essential for the uh, protection of our sovereignty. We have to make sure that we manufacture more goods domestically in the next six years by a factor of 1.5. Imports in the 90s were 26% of our GDP. Last year, it was 19% of GDP. And by 2030, we have to 
make sure that that falls even further to 17%. And that means, and that means that we ourselves have to manufacture more domestically, particularly medicine, medical equipment, and so on. We have to, we can't go cold turkey and do everything, but we have to increase the domestic manufacturing base. And we have to fundamentally increase uh, productivity. This means that we have to increase digitalization throughout the country. And realize the proposals which are on the table. And Russia is uh, one of the 25 leading countries of the world now to use robotics on a wide scale. By 2030, All institutions in uh, social welfare uh, is going to uh, be involved. This is a huge task, a huge colossal task. And the engineering schools obviously have to be involved here in the as a priority. Fifty new schools in this area are planned 30 are already up and running so i urge you to uh, increase these engineering schools and make sure there is a good cohesive network of such institutions throughout the country which will ensure us good specialists in the future and training Graduates is uh, another very important area where we have to concentrate uh, in industry, in agriculture, and so on. And obviously, we have to develop AI. This is very, very important. We have to make sure that all schools develop a kind of digital hub, a digital center, and we are, are going to earmark billions of rubles for that purpose. Colleagues, over the last years, Russia has opened hundreds of new plants, manufacturing plants. This is just ongoing work. Aluminium works, uh, mining works, like the one in Baikal, uh, military equipment, <coughs> and all these efforts have to be continued. But the increase in uh, manufacturing income from these areas in the next six years must in, must be above 40 percent and it, and job creation of course is very important there so we've already launched a program of uh, support to industry aimed at enhancing their infrastructure, their personnel, staffing, and so on. And we have to make sure that all those mechanisms are continued and encouraged in the next six years. And subsidies will also be available for R&D. This will help us modernize 
things and increase the manufacturing platform of the country. And this will only encourage the rate of development which we've already seen. We are thinking about an increase of uh, 40 million uh, square meters uh, of manufacturing area. In addition, at 300 billion rubles are being set aside for uh, industrial development, particularly to support high-tech projects. And another 200 billion are going to be devoted to cluster platforms to ensure the superior superiority of manufactured articles. And I propose that we uh, extend the base of that for fighting depreciation. This sounds a bit boring, but let me explain what I mean. If we acquire equipment, for example, for 10 million, we can substantially, uh, in those cases, reduce taxation. And I think also we have to think about uh, SMEs and how to uh, make sure that they are targeted towards uh, the needs of the nation. And I think that will have a mutually beneficial uh, effect for everybody. Uh, we've seen a bit less than 100 such SME platforms come into existence over the last year, and we have to make sure that they are increased. We have to increase it by 70%. So I think the rate of development in this area is good. I would say very good, but it, it's good. Let's say good. The rate of The rate of uh, investment uh, in this area was 8.6 last year, and we expected only 4.5. And we were expecting investments of 15.1% uh, uh, last year, and it rose to 26%. Uh, the banking sector has to provide for this development of the economy, particularly with regard to shareholding. And this has to support the development of industrialization. So, the central bank is supporting the high-tech projects in particular. We must urge the development of high-tech, the high-tech uh, area in general. And uh, in order to do that, we have to make sure that we change our securities policy. And we have to make sure that uh, they are redefined uh, as a way of strengthening the economy. It is important that citizens should uh, have the means of investing their money, investing their wages. And deposits of 2.8 million will be guaranteed by the state.
and there will be particular tax uh, breaks for people who are investing more than 400,000 <coughs> citizens will be able to <coughs> uh, put savings into accounts over more than three years and get uh, a much bigger interest on it. And all that will be guaranteed by the state that is twice, we will be doing it at twice the rate as before. Let me just stress that all these state support measures for investments are, are, must be in line with the increase of wages in general. And, of course, all Russian business, domestic business, must come under Russian jurisdiction. We have regular meetings with Russian business discussing how we can help them most. And it is through this question of Russian jurisdiction. The improvement, enhancement of uh, personnel, the uh, support measures from government, all that is about the uh, security of Russia, security and sovereignty of the country as a whole. Investment savings and uh, property has to be properly guaranteed by the state the rights of business has to be properly guaranteed by the state. I often say that nobody nobody will be allowed to uh, to thwart the development of an banking and uh, business. Uh, what we have to do is to make sure that we support the business uh, community in Russia, particularly SMEs, particularly in tourism, in manufacture, and the invention of new brands. Only in the last year, more than 1.2 million new, um, um, new SMEs were registered. And... I would also like to point out that in 2023, there was a 20% increase in uh, young uh, business people, young entrepreneurs. And I should just like to urge that in the next six years, this rate should increase as a priority. I urge the government to work out parameters for amnestying smaller companies, particularly suffering from excessive taxation. And to make sure that we have normal, civilized attitudes to the support of industries that there should be fewer fines and administrative measures carried out against them 
and that their tax burden should be alleviated. I should also urge government to make sure that as from the beginning of next year, there should be a smooth progression of taxation rather than uh, a jerky one as before. We have to make sure there is more client security for uh, new businesses. And we have to make sure that legislation provides for that. It's underpinned by legislation. And I would also urge the government to bring in special support to small industries, small businesses. Let me repeat, we have to make sure that all conditions are in place for small companies, SMEs, to develop properly. The taxation regime for SMEs has to be uh, mitigated. I've spoken about this uh, a number of times already. And I think that, uh, you know, these proposals are now have come to maturation. Russia is a leader on the global market for wheat, for example, even despite the sanctions and so on. And I should like to thank our farmers for that and everybody involved in that area. They have come up with impressive results. And the arms market of Russia uh, has to increase its exports as well. And we are ushering in new measures, particularly for the uh, littoral regions, the coastal regions of the country. So they can actually renew the fleet of coastal vessels. especially with regard to uh, fishing, uh, fisheries and fish products. Uh, we are going to incentivate that uh, sector very considerably to make sure that we extend the base of uh, the baseline of our fisheries. Dear colleagues, we are proposing the enhancement of all areas of the economy, particularly through digitalization and AI, through the creation of platforms which uh, allow for a real enhancement of uh, citizens' opportunities here. So I urge you to support that and make sure that, that support is uh, continued throughout the life cycle of such businesses. This goes particularly for medicine, for example, where uh, medical professionals go, can link up with uh, specialists. So that they can diagnose better and work out better schemes for treatment. The challenge, of course, is to make sure that this is a mass development and one which is easily accessible. 
and we have to make sure that this kind of approach is replicated throughout all spheres of our economic life. And we will be earmarking 700 billion rubles in the next six years for that purpose. Integrated platforms open up huge opportunities for the development of the economy as a whole and will enhance also the governance of our national projects. And the interests of every individual and family will be thereby safeguarded. Incidentally, Russia is one of the leading countries in the world for, in terms of implementing uh, uh, digitalization. And of course, artificial intelligence uh, is very important here. We have to make sure that we are competitive in this area. This is a whole strategic priority. And we have to make sure that we have a technological sovereignty uh, in terms of AI. Its implementation requires a real breakthrough in uh, economic and industrial terms. It has to be a breakthrough by 2030. And we have to increase supercomputers by 2030 by a factor of 10. And I urge the government to uh, propose specific measures for companies producing those kind of supercomputers. And we have to double the investment possibilities of such firms. And this must involve not just the mega, the really big cities of uh, Russia, but also the remote regions. In the next 10 years, we have to make sure that the whole territory of Russia is covered by broadband. And this depends, of course, on our satellite development. And we are earmarking uh, 600 billion rubles for that purpose. Colleagues, I'd just like to talk uh, a little about regional development now. What does this mean? First of all, we have to make sure that the entities are properly protected. I think it's absolutely essential that we write off the debts of such regions. This will allow them to uh, save something like uh, 250 billion rubles a year and these resources which have been saved will be redirected to the development of infrastructure. In addition, in 2021, we launched uh, a project for structured funding and we have extended that scheme. I'd just like to remind you that we have substantially reduced taxation on the entities. This is a very important measure. And these loans will not be written off, but 
next year the regions will begin uh, begin repaying them and new loans will be directed to developing further infrastructure for such regions. And as from 2025, there will be much more investment in infrastructure. I also believe that the region should be given more opportunities uh, to participate in national projects. Let me give you an example. Polyclinics. Uh, if resources are left over from their budget, uh, they will not be returned to the federal budget, but they will be uh, aimed at repairing the institutions and also uh, acquiring new equipment. And, of course, we support those entities of the Federation which are particularly backward in terms of infrastructure because infrastructure is a real driver of development. And I urge you to extend that program which is already being implemented for another six years because all our regions must become more economically self-sufficient. This is fair, just, and particularly in the interests of uh, justice to our citizens, colleagues. As we see, these plans are very big. The expenditure as well. Large-scale investments in welfare, in the demography of the country, in technology, in infrastructure. All these are very big, but they are part of a systemic vision. And they are aimed at general, at the general development of Russia as a whole. We have to particularly pay attention to household incomes and to a modernization of our tax system and mitigate uh, the tax burden on those particularly vulnerable areas that I mentioned. We have to stimulate business infrastructure development and plug all the loopholes which exist in the system uh, already, particularly in the tax system. So I should like to urge government to think about that in the near future and to amend the system so as to uh, take care of these tax problems in order to provide a stable, sustainable, predictable development of the projects. Distinguished colleagues, the growth of our economy depends on the development of these regions. We have already extended the uh, particular programs for the Caucasus, Donbass, uh, the Arctic, uh, the Far East, and Crimea. And a master plan for development has been elaborated by the government for that purpose, particularly for the Arctic. We have to make the next step now, though. We have to make sure that for each of 200 small and very small towns, we have a master plan for de development. And the decisions of the various entities of the Federation have to be 
uh, aimed at that, as I already said, resources must be also aimed at developing municipalities. This is going to address lots of the everyday concerns of our citizens. I should just also like to mention the plight of municipal workers who work in combat zones. We have to implement more citizen participation in the work of municipalities. I propose that we give more support from the regional budgets to these kind of volunteer and citizen uh, ideas, particularly in very small towns. And in the next six years, I propose that we um, increase the building of uh, social areas by 30,000. And uh, we will be earmarking government federal funds for that purpose. Uh, ancient buildings, estates... Uh, these kind of things which determine our national identity, they will also be the centre of our uh, attention in terms of funding. And we have to ensure that our uh, protection of such sites is uh, properly guaranteed by a plan. So I propose that the government crafts a plan for the protection of heritage sites in Russia and one which is aimed at the next 20 years. And particularly... We will be supporting volunteer efforts to restore monuments, for example. And that for a whole series of uh, regions, including Baikal, Novgorod, and so on. And by 2030, we hope very much that uh, uh, repairs will be undertaken to a 1,000 uh, historical monuments, We will also be refreshing the infrastructure of schools, educational establishments as a whole, and we will be supporting creative projects uh, with regard to national education And we're also going to incentivate those schemes which uh, are uh, aimed at young people visiting museums and uh, estates and so on and so forth. And I should like you to pay particular attention to that. In addition, uh, we will, in 2025, uh, be launching a program called... Uh, farmers' incentives. The graduates who are going to work in villages will be 
uh, will be able to get a an allowance of uh, one million rubles and those who go to uh, problem areas like the Far East or uh, Crimea or Donbass will get two million. And we're also proposing mortgage packages for very small towns And we have to make sure that this is a top priority. And that it should involve small uh, deposits. And we're going to also uh, mitigate the mortgage conditions for people living in the Far East and for uh, veterans in the special military operation, amongst others. We're going to concentrate particularly on the housing problem. We are earmarking 120 billion uh, rubles, particularly to those areas in need. And we are also going to make sure that emergency measures are in place for uh, areas which have um, suffered, particularly from natural disasters and so on. Emergency housing will be important there. As far as utilities are concerned, we are going to uh, acceler accelerate modernization here, particularly with regard to households. And we are investing, investing in that uh, something like three to four trillion rubles. We will continue uh, our pure water project as well. Uh, this is a very, very urgent problem for a whole number of settlements, the supply of proper drinking water. Yakutia, Khabarovsk, lots of the areas in the Far East, the Jewish Autonomous Region, the Korean area are regions which are particularly uh, vulnerable and this kind of project will uh, allow us to make sure that uh, the welfare schemes are enhanced and it will affect more than a million inhabitants. There are lots of areas where people for generations have uh, been farming land and they couldn't inhabit their houses because they didn't have any gas. Uh, now that will be a thing of the past. So this is affecting a million families in general. So I urge that we extend this program of gasification for small settlements. And we have to also mitigate the plight of those people living in the Far East and the North, which won't be uh, benefiting from this uh, gasification program. Ibis 
supplying them with domestically produced uh, equipment to mitigate this lack of gas. And we will be providing public transport in line with uh, sustainable development. Something like 60,000 buses, trams, trolley buses, and so on and so forth. And that will account for something like 150 billion rubles from the federal budget. And we are going to make sure that we have a fleet of buses for school buses for children living in that area. This is a very, very important project. And we are allocating an additional 56 billion rubles to that purpose. Uh, in the Pure Air program, we have managed to really decrease uh, pollution, particularly in 10 or 12 towns. But we have a complex system of monitoring now in place to uh, to record the performance of the program. And our aim is to reduce pollution by a half, by half to halve pollution. And that will particularly alleviate, alleviate the uh, situation in eight big towns and 80,000 uh, uh, particular facilities. What do I want to emphasize here, colleagues? That these are urgent measures, but they are not exhaustive. We have to make sure that we finish this work. We have to bring it to fruition. In the next six years, we have to make sure that we reduce the environmental uh, damage in 50 particular facilities. And ensure that we also have a waste disposal system which is uh, modernized. By 2030, all hard waste must be recycled. And this will affect something like 400 uh, waste disposal units. We also have to make sure that we look again at our timber reserves. This is very important in terms of our public as well. The situation is changing all the time, though. As from 2025, we will actually be planting more trees than we are cutting down. And this is an effort which involves a lot of volunteers, so school children and so on, in order to make sure that we all become much more environmentally concerned. We have to see as a priority the restoration of parks, nature reserves and so on. 
And so I propose to increase the wages of all those concerned with the conservation of nature because this is one of the most important questions of our environmental welfare. The problems they solve are very, very important, but their wages are very, very modest. I believe also that it is important to set up an environmental fund and the uh, initial investment is one billion per year. Their aim will be, amongst others, to restore nature, to make sure that ex extinct species are, or species which are likely to become extinct are saved. And by 2030, we must uh, we must uh, create uh, sustainable tourism bases uh, for uh, throughout the country. We must have safety facilities installed also uh, near our waters, the lakes, for example, Lake Baikal. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, there is no waste disposal in the waters of the country. There is a big project which is going to be launched called Five Seas, which is going to affect the Azov Sea, the Baltic, Caspian, and so on. And the tourist sector is going to be responsible for some 10 million jobs. But we believe that the, uh, uh, that the influx of tourism is going to be doubled in the next uh, six years to 100 million. And all kinds of new proposals are being put forward in this area. A transport infrastructure, of course, is essential. And this affects, of course, the construction of uh, major motorways from Moscow to Kazan, for example, uh, and a whole network which goes from right from Moscow to Vladivostok. It will cut down the time of travel enormously. And uh, our Infrastructure projects and road, new roads uh, will really affect the, Balt the Black Sea area. Tunnels, bridges, and so on and so forth. It's a very expensive project, that. But we need to uh, enhance investment there. I'd like you to work on that. We have to maintain we have to sustain the uh, rate of development we've enjoyed in uh, uh, providing uh, roads in big cities and ensure the uh, air transport for our citizens. We are planning to uh, increase and accelerate the development of uh, internal airlines and make sure that we modernize some 75 airports throughout the country.
and uh, we are earmarking 25 billion rubles to the modernization of the air sector. We have to use domestically produced aircraft. They have to be airworthy. They have to be high quality. And we've been buying foreign uh, produced uh, aircraft for a long time. We have to produce our own. Railways are very important too. And the new line from Moscow to St. Petersburg will go via uh, Tver and uh, Novgorod. And there will be a link from Kazan to the Black Sea, to Minsk as well. We will continue work on full-scale modernization of rail hubs, too. So, make sure there is high-speed links between Tiraspol, Kaluga, uh, Novgorod, and so on. And this will have a big knock-on effect in terms of uh, tourism, industry, and so on. And that will affect the far north, too. Modern infrastructure really makes a big difference to the development of infrastructure in all regions which have tourist potential. And this means that families will be able to build more comfortable homes for their bigger families. I would also like to address another thing which I've noticed in my travels throughout the country, and that is the long wait for uh, registration from one town to another. And so the colleagues working in the Ministry of Transport have a big challenge here. The waiting time between regions should not be more than 10 minutes. And this particularly concerns the North-South Corridor in Russia. We hope that not only should there be roads, but there should be a seamless uh, multimodal uh, system of transport on the north-south axis, particularly southwards uh, transport towards the Sea of Azov and the Black Sea. Then the Trans-Siberian, the eastern route, is also going to need modernization. A lot has already been done, but by 2030, the uh, tonnage of uh, goods uh, transported will be considerably Im improved. And we encourage all economic sectors to make wide use, broad use of these new infrastructure projects. The rate of development here is higher than in the, in the Soviet Union. We are also providing for all year round navigational possibilities. 
This particularly has reference to the Arctic fleet. They have uh, unique uh, research stations above the Arctic Circle. And, of course, we have just launched the new nuclear research uh, vessel, uh, Leningrad, and then Stalingrad is another one which is going to uh, be training new, a new uh, generation of leaders. The merchant fleet is also going to be enhanced, uh, which is going to um, increase trade very considerably. Distinguished citizens of Russia, dear friends, I should just like to say the following. I continually meet with participants in the special military operation. These are uh, contract soldiers and volunteers and people who were mobilized as well. They have come to the defense of the country. They're all young folk, young lads. And I must say that when I meet them, my heart is full of pride. These people will not recoil from the danger. They will not stab us in the back. They will not be vanquished. So my gratitude goes, my gratitude goes to them, to the voluntary organizations, public organizations, to the uh, government bodies in those regions, those people who are carrying out some of the most important projects of the country. But there are people who are modest in their own ways, who do not boast about their achievements, but who are responsible before history. These are the people who are assuming the responsibilities of the country. These are the people who are the harbingers of our future. The word elite has been discredited a lot recently. An elite considers as a kind of a superior caste. People who, like in the former generations, would just stuff their pockets in the 90s. They are certainly not an elite in that sense. They are real leaders. They are people who serve the countries, who toil for it, and who, through their actions, prove their commitment to Russia. These are really decent folk. In this connection, I think it was a very wise decision as from the 1st of March this year to make it possible for such people to uh, participate in a in something called the first CADA program. This is an idea which came to me when I uh, met students. This program will be based on the standards of our very best projects. It was born out of a project called Best Governors and these people will be promoted to senior positions. And this will affect those who have taken part in the military operation, 
people who have shown their very best qualities and tuition will begin in the next months for these people it will mean that there will be job openings uh, in government in ministries and so on and we have to extend the staffing of these kind of projects and make sure that uh, the civil service uh, has openings for them veterans and participants in the special military operations uh, will be able to uh, have greater access to higher education I urge the Ministry of uh, Defense and the commanders in the Donbass to uh, plug into this new uh, program and to allow such people to go off on training courses because these commanding officers really are the backbone of our uh, defense and they should be allowed to go to uh, command schools dear friends self-sufficiency security sovereignty has to be proven every day and this is our responsibility for the future this is our country our future generation and it is only down to us and therefore we have to make sure that we uh, emerge as a decent country as a sovereign country we have to make sure that we modernize the country digitalize it and enhance the access to information in general we have to train our citizens and I urge all my colleagues in government in the various bodies of government to painstakingly work out this new system this is going to require a lot of work but it is already yielding results we can see it we will continue to work along these lines and all the plans which I've mentioned have to be consolidated confirmed and they have to be targeted to a general systemic objective all organs of power of government have to be in the business of implementing these ideas the main idea of course is people the scale of these historical challenges before us requires very targeted cohesive efforts it is not just a question of conceiving grand plans but of making sure that all the resources are properly uh, indexed or properly taken care of and of course there will be new initiatives added to the ones which I've already mentioned in the upcoming years despite all our uh, current concerns and problems we will be implementing a robust sovereign system of projects 
we have colossal possibilities. We are over-resourced by nature. And we are capable of implementing all these plans I've talked about. And this is down to all our military men fighting on the front. their courage, their valor in defending the country means that they are on the attack, they are sacrificing themselves for the country. Our military men, our warriors are ensuring the maximum conditions for our future. So I bow to you. I commend your efforts. I thank you all, dear colleagues, all citizens of Russia for your solidarity and your reliability. We are one big family. We are together and therefore we will do everything that we are planning on. We will realize all our dreams for the future of Russia. Thank you.